Andrew Neal. The white flag is raised. 30 runners said they're off over six furlongs in the Coolmore Stud Adish EDF Philly Sprint. Group stakes um, beginning well in the purple and white launch. Needs on the rain making time being followed. The end of the first furlong, Porta Fortuna, running fast as Richestina, followed by Baited Moan, and then west of Wichita. On the outside, Ziggy's Dream, then Neo Smart, who's on the heels of the leaders, being followed by Porta Squeeze, and Smart Impressions next. Followed inside the four furlong point by Jack, who's on the outside of Nabassa Island, and then comes Blaine for Champagne. Reaching the halfway stage, and they're tightly grouped, and it's Ripchestina just with the lead from Baited Moon. Ziggy's Dream being called on for a run over on the far side is Porta Fortuna with launch, then making time and switch to Smart Impression, and they're followed by Neo Smart. What a squeeze west of which it has dropped back the Navasa Island. Jack who and Blake the Champagne, they hit the hill, and the final furlong, and it's Porta Fortuna, who has sprouted wings over on the far side and kicked away with Navasa Island coming out of the pack and closing on the outside, but it's Porta Fortuna, Porta Fortuna from Navasa Island, running well clear of launch, and then Rip Justine and Blake the Champagne, Big day for trainer Dunnock O'Brien, who's just seen Porta Fortuna land the Group 3 Kilmore Stud Irish EBF Philly Sprint Stakes. Dunnock, I'm sure you were coming here today in many ways to find out what you have. How yeah. are you feeling after that? Yeah, exactly. I think I think that's what most people you know, were you know, in a group race like that for two rows, a lot of maiden winners and, and even horses that hadn't won maidens. Uh, we thought she was smart, uh, but nice to see her take the step up in class well. And new owners, obviously, back to you and I suppose what they saw from the Philly first time out by coming on board. What was your feeling though coming here today realistically? Did you think she'd go close? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, she works like a smart filly. We thought she was a smart filly after her maiden. You know, she probably was um, probably should have won you know a good bit further if things had gone better for her on the day and, and um, to be fair they're, they're, they're um, some American partners and they they, um, they liked her and to be fair they, they invested in her and, and that they were dead right and uh, she's a valuable filly now. What was your thoughts watching the race? She obviously showed a lovely turn of foot to go clear and then just had to hold on laid on from the O'Callaghan filly. Yeah she, she did and um, she, she you know she's plenty pace I think she'd probably have no problem with five furlongs either uh, but you know it, it's a stiff six here especially when they go a gallop so you know I, I wouldn't have any concerns at five or six. So options for her at Royal Ascot, which I presume is where she's going to head next. Will you leave a decision late? What race she runs in? Yeah, probably. Um, you know, I'll have, I'll have to speak to the owners and, and see what they want. But I, I would I would imagine that you know Plan A would be Royal Ascot after that. Um, uh, as I said, I think she'd have no problem with the Queen Mary or the Albany. Um, so look, we'll, 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 I'll speak to them and we'll make a decision. First world problems, as they say. Dunica, while we have you, Proud and Regal, what's the update? Will he go to the Curra next week? Yeah, he's in good form, planning to go to the Curra for the Guineas. Um, you know, Gavin, Gavin thought that, that he maybe... Uh, the 10 furlong stretched him a little bit at a stiff track like Leopard Sound, but it was his first run of the year, so he probably got a bit tired as well. Uh, but the, the, the Irish Guineas was nice spacing, so uh, the plan is to go there, but he's in good form and uh, hopefully run well. And the way you're talking there, does that mean derbies are off the agenda for him now? No, not really. Um, you know, we're just kind of, we, we still really haven't figured out what his trip is really, but. Um, you know, I, I took him out of Epsom, um, so look, we'll see how the Guineas goes. I, I suppose he'd also have the option of um, travelling abroad to, to you know races like something like the Belmont Derby and them kind of races either. But look, we'll see how the Guineas goes. And Pisbedale come on nicely from his return. Yeah, yeah, he came on. He, he's working very well. Um, you know, it was hard to hard to know what to take out of that last race. It was a, it was a mess of a race. Um, so the plan is to go to the Tats Gold Cup. It, it looks a very strong race on paper, but um, yeah, that's the plan. Exciting times. Well done again today, Jonathan. Thanks for talking to us. Lovely. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.